In the 1920s, when quantum mechanics was first developed, Dirac famously said that the fundamental theory for most of chemistry and all of physics is thus completely known. The only problem is the equations are much too difficult to be solved. And computers have enabled us to solve these equations to differing degrees of approximation. That's a major part of computational chemistry, is working out which approximations are, are good enough to allow you to get meaningful results that really complement and help the experimentalists understand what's um, going on. Professor Sally Price's team of computational chemists at University College London is part of a national group of e-scientists researching the behaviour of organic compounds. The search in the laboratory for new and stable crystal structures of these compounds is now being aided by e-science software tools powered by grid computing. Single crystal x-ray diffraction is very central to our work. We would find it very difficult to do crystal structure prediction without having some idea of the structure to start with. So the way it works is that you um, irradiate um, x-ray photons onto your crystal and then you observe the diffracted beams that you get on a sensitive detector. Once we obtain that information we try to solve the structure again using computing methods um, and we then either use that structure as a model for finding polymorphs uh, or we try to do some, sort of, some, some other form of modelling. The problem of polymorphism is well known to the pharmaceutical industry. An early example was an HIV drug that had to be recalled at massive expense because it was less soluble when taken orally. Computer-based simulation is a compelling solution for quickly and accurately discovering the answers to 21st century drug production. There is a problem that many molecules will adopt more than one crystal structure. That's known as polymorphism. And the different polymorphs will dissolve in your body in a different way and give a different effective dose. The reason why we want to look at polymorphism of any molecule for example, a drug that would form as a dimer or a chain. If a pharmaceutical company has developed this and know it has the crystal structure that's a dimer, if you take a tablet of this, it will dissolve at a certain rate in your body and have a certain dosing profile. The fact that it might perhaps form a chain one day means if it starts forming this chain in the manufacturing process and you take a tablet of that instead, it's got a completely different dosing profile in your body. So you could be overdosing, you could be, it could be not dissolving at all and just going straight through you. Those are the ultimate implications. A major part of the research is trying to understand the phenomena of polymorphism and do the calculations to see which crystal structures are feasible for a molecule and try and understand what determines which of them are being found, what routes you might make in the different crystallisation experiments that can be carried out in the lab and elsewhere to find these new polymorphs. And that is a very major driver behind um, this research. The Engage initiative is supporting Professor Sally Price and her team by updating and upgrading their software systems to take advantage of the national grid systems of computers. This offer of help of updating the computer science is extremely valuable to us and we're hoping that we will be able to do much larger calculations on more molecules and transfer the process to the national grid system will be moving towards more of the molecules that the pharmaceutical industry are actually interested in doing, uh, as well as um, increasing the already quite large range of calculations we're doing for various academic collaborators. The computing really has um, evolved. Before I started my PhD, um, a typical search would probably take a week. Nowadays, we can get thousands of packing arrangements within hours.